Well, there we go, cops on bikes. And uh, here we are, Marshall, in the uh, Lincoln Park neighborhood of Chicago. You know the area very well. What can you tell me about this general area in context of standard living and everything for Chicago? Well, Lincoln Park is home to DePaul University. Obviously, there's a lot of different things over here. Um, this kind of details it right here, Lincoln Park. You have Lake Michigan right here. We're right here right now. This is Lakeshore Drive here. Comes down to North Avenue Beach, which is right here. Also, Fullerton Avenue goes to the water here. This is North Clark Street that goes into Wrigleyville and into uh, the Boys Town area. And these are some of the attractions here. So this is a pretty well-regarded area. Behind me is DePaul University. Uh, over here, part of their campus exactly, over here. Yeah. Very expensive to live here. Yeah, like 50000 a year with room and board for oh, this, yeah. uh, this for this college. Area. Over here, but what what we're here, what's unusual on this map is what's missing, right, Marshall? Why don't you tell them what happens to be missing on well, this? Well, according to Rosie, this is where the Valentine's Day massacre occurred. And um, I guess I might have probably watched a documentary on, on YouTube, but I was mentioning to Rosie that if she wants to, to know anything about the Chicago mob, she needs to watch the documentary on Frank Nitty. Mr. X told me about Frank Nitty. <clears throat> I watched the documentary. Frank Nitty was running the mafia while Al Capone was, was locked up in jail. And then they had all these charges on him. They were going to put him in jail. Then he committed suicide. But he was part of the integral part of running uh, Al Capone's Chicago mafia. And, and let me let me jail. say hi to Michaela and everybody else on the Cassidy Hampton, everybody on the side. Chad, nice to see you. So Marshall has lived here a lot of years in Chicago. So he knows the particular neighborhoods, but I think it's fascinating. There's no marker on here at all. And there was a time, I believe, the city of Chicago wanted to de-emphasize its mob history here. So they kind of uh, there's took away. There's yeah. for tourism. There's no statue. There's nothing. It just looks like a gate and an alley. Nobody yeah. would know what's there. Yeah. So Nobody would know anymore. There's no memorialization. Exactly. So we'll see. There's some beautiful uh, buildings. There's a lot of modern mixed in. So let's go up the street to 2122 North Clark Street and talk about that cold Chicago day of February 14th, 1929. And a lot of things happened as a result of the St. Valentine's Day massacre that we'll get into. It wasn't so much what happened that day, but the aftermath is uh, fascinating and what happened too. So you can see it's a fancy area here. Mm -hmm. And like you say, being so close to Lake Michigan, it's the high, uh, the high rent. Uh, Exactly, and also close to Deep Point University. There he is over here. A lot of nice buildings and homes over here. Very expensive. Lincoln Park Zoo is here. That's a very famous attraction. Now, are there two zoos in Chicago or one? The Chicago Zoo? There's two. There's a Brookfield Zoo, which is kind of like in the suburbs. And here in the city of Chicago, there's a Lincoln Park Zoo. Okay. Everybody knows about the Lincoln Park Zoo. How are you doing, Quinny? Well, if Lincoln Park is adjacent to uh, Boys Town and Wrigleyville, so. Uh, a lot of nightlife and stuff, so it's a very, very nice area. Yeah, it's kind of a, a kind of a little bit of a rainy day today. You claim that building was standing when it happened, right? Well, no yeah, this building over here certainly had to be uh, certainly had to be standing at the time of the uh, massacre. Uh, and I don't believe the stream is buffering at all, Carlos Martinez. I believe you're saying something that's not true. Probably both of the buildings. That's an old one too, next to it, right? Yeah. I would think both of them and also there. down here, these buildings, and of course, there's been some infill and some other things. So, yeah. and of course, Carlos doesn't uh, lives in Chicago and claimed he'd always meet up, but he never has. So, that's 2139 Clark, right <laughs> Thank there. Thank you, Michaela. Yeah, and you can you actors. can bet that these uh, these probably date from the 1880s to yeah. 1910s over here. Yeah. <laughs> see a massive apartment or condominium complex over here. And I like the way they have the hanging baskets. You can kind of tell a fancy neighborhood. You're not going to see this on North Avenue or any of the places oh, yeah. that we came through one of the most over here. I'll give you the street view. One of the most expensive places to live. City of Chicago right here. <laughs> now the building directly ahead up here is 2120 North Clark Street, which would make this empty.
lot 2122 North Clark Street. And this is where the uh, action happened here on February 14th, 1929, St. St. Uh, Valentine's Day, the massacre. And you can see there's no memorialization here at all on Clark Street, but I'm betting at one time that there most certainly was uh, over here. But with the de-emphasis of the uh, gang activity, this would have been the site here. But actually, it's not, yeah, six members of the Bugs Moran gang were gunned down by members of the Al Capone gang. It's fine, go ahead. Sure. Reason being, it was a uh, Irish gangs versus the Italian gangs for control of basically bootlegging. Prohibition was in full swing at that time. It was illegal to uh, well, you can produce no, and sell liquor. There's no memorialization because this yeah. is a very, very posh area, and it's all high-end real estate. And yeah. They don't want it, anything here to be a tourist attraction. This is actually a <coughs> private property now. Yeah. With a parking lot for this condominium building here. So. So it's amazing. This woman just went into 2120, and I guarantee you this building was standing right here in 1929. This is an old building. Yep. Is an old building. Whatever, what actually happened was members of, uh, and, and uh, people think Al Capone was here at the time that this, uh, at the time that this massacre occurred, people wrongly believe that Al Capone was in Chicago, but actually he was in Miami at that time in his estate down in Miami. Yeah, yeah. So he had the perfect alibi that he wasn't involved in wasn't it. Involved. But what actually happened was on that Didn't morning. Didn't he get out of it? He was, he was, he had the perfect alibi, so they couldn't pin anything on Al Capone. Al Capone ended up going to jail for tax evasion, for right? Tax evasion yeah, right. Okay. Yep. If you ever saw the movie that uh, was Kevin Costner and, and Sean Connery and the key thing about. to know when he went to jail for tax evasion, <coughs> the person that took over the Chicago Frank mob was Nitty. Frank Nitty. And that's okay. the person that you got to watch the documentary on. He was running yes. the whole Chicago mob. So on that very cold morning, I don't know how they did it, but members of, I guess if you were a gang member, you could get your hands on paying anything that you wanted to get. So if you wanted to get some police uniforms, you could pay off somebody get some police uniforms. So various members of the Italian Capone's gang were dressed as policemen. And that's what gave them the entree here is nobody second guessed them. When they pulled up, as we'll see in the back alley back here, it didn't happen out here, it happened in the back alley back there. As they pulled up, some of the gang members of the Irish gang fled on foot because they didn't want the police confrontation but when they opened the doors to the warehouse here on 2122 Clark Street, the people that were inside were the ones that met that were gunned down on that uh, morning. So let's walk around the backside. We'll walk down the alley there and we'll take a look. We'll put this back on the street side. Yeah. And you can see this is 2120 next door here. This is really a beautiful, really beautiful building. And the funny thing too is Nobody was willing, even the people uh, that survived the shooting were unwilling to tell anything that happened that day of uh, that. So, a beautiful building uh, here. I don't think there's anything to here, no, that's... So what we'll do is just walk around the block to the alley behind. And most of that alley looks very authentic too, as it would have stood in 1929, which I think is really cool, so. Let me uh, fix the stick here, and we'll go on a bit. What a beautiful neighborhood. You can see part of the skyline, I guess. I'm not sure if that's Willard's Tower up there. I think that's the John Hancock building. John Hancock. That's not Tower, it's John Hancock. Beautiful, look at the way they've, uh, look at the way they've finished these, this beautiful varnishing oh, on this yeah. mahogany wood. I think very few people would have been aware of the actual location today. This is the corner of Dickens and Clark Street. We'll go around the side to the alley and walk back there. As I say, that's much more authentic to 1929.
some of these beautiful uh, this architecture. Yeah, I'm just saying it's a lot of mahogany, original mahogany on these uh, buildings. Huh? Pretty buildings. Cool. Yep, this looks like it's been repointed and rebricked some of this. Re tug pointed, right? <laughs> yeah, repointed. Yep. Look at how round these are here. You yep. never see these in new buildings. Yeah, these little cupolas yep. that stick out on these. This is really Chicago style. Wow, this is pretty cool. Here, architecture, huh? Yep. Look at the uh, look at the brickwork this over that doorway. I guess this is also known as a, a, a church attraction. I think it's on the list. The yep. Look at the brickwork around that door. Can you imagine that? Uh, you know the Italian masons and bricklayers that did this type of uh, work. I always said if you want a good stone work done, you hire an Italian to do it. They yep. really do beautifully in stone. That's Italian design, <laughs> there, Rosie. Yeah, it's Italianate, they would call that stall. So this must be a really fancy apartment here or condo. Yeah, yeah probably. And now this is the actual back alley where the confrontation really occurred and the gunning down occurred here. You can see it. Most everything here probably is authentic to 1929. You can see the cobblestone. Look at the cobblestone down on the yep. uh, street. This would have been uh, probably the original road surface here. They have left Coming some back of it, right? here. How you doing, D? They have left and, some of it. I'm and you, they yeah, it. you have some of it. It's been concrete over. But you can imagine now on that February 14, 1929, that was uh, that Italian gang dressed as cops coming in here. Two guys had submachine guns. One had 20 rounds and one had 50 rounds in the Thompson submachine gun. And they came rolling down this alley right here, right behind 21, 22. And this, if you look at this building here, this would have been the authentic type of doors that they would have had in 1929 here. And the gang would have been assembled there and they would have gone into one of the, uh, uh, you know, knocked on the door and said police and some people, some people fled of the Irish gang when they saw the cops coming, but there were people inside of there. Are these actual garage doors? Yeah, these are actual garage doors here. And yeah, this that's is pretty the, cool up there too. Yep. This is the type that you would have seen in 1929 coming back here. And this is it. And this is where they would have pulled up behind this steel gate over here. And the deed would have been done. Well, this is actually 2120. Right yeah, here. that's right in 2120. And then we get to the lot right here. And here it is. And what I think is fascinating is of all the buildings, and obviously there was some tear down here, but there's no memorialization. And this would have been uh, part of it. The wall was part of the M SMG Cartage Company garage, which was demolished in 1967. So they didn't want to leave a trace of it. They just made it into a park. Really, uh, really no trace, but you can see, I guarantee you these buildings were around in uh, 1929 right here. Yeah called being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, look how they made it where there's like nothing here. Nothing here, nothing at all. But this was the infamous site of it. As a result of this, J. Edgar Hoover, he was the FBI chief from 1924 well into the 19, I think all the way up to Nixon's uh, time of 50 years as the FBI director. When this news came down, he went absolutely nuts and declared all-out war on gangs in, uh, in the United States because innocent people were being gunned down and sprayed by bullets here. How so. old was the cobblestone here? <laughs> he yeah. said, but the blood-stained bullet pockmarks, they had everybody line up against the wall with their hands against the wall, their backs turned, and the two cops with submachine guns opened fire on them standing against the wall there. So. And Mark Handler says somebody actually purchased that wall and had it moved, that, uh, that death wall. So there it is. What's left the ground is certainly here, but the building has been removed. And I think that's when the FBI really went all out against uh, gang war and prohibition. Because yeah. J. Edgar Hoover hated lawlessness. Yeah. So.
You know, Mark Handler says it was covered with plexiglass and had targets painted on it. Patrons were able to hit the targets with their pee would trigger a stream of water to flush the urinal. That's pretty cool. <laughs> if you peed on the target, it would flush the urinal. So I don't think very any famous. tours come here at all. I don't think any, very few tours come here at all. That's correct. <clears throat> but a very si interesting scene for us is I think anybody that does come here concentrates on the front street here as opposed to the back where the alley where they actually enter through these type of garage doors and did the job. Carolyn says, my family bootlegged alcohol to Chicago from Tennessee. That's pretty cool. So, all right, there it goes. It's really cool to look at the staircase here. Yeah, this is, uh, fire escape. these are traditional uh, fire. apartment fire escapes. When you come down and go forward on that, it automatically lowers at a set rate to come down. As you can see, it's counterbalanced on the back here. There may actually be a date on this. <coughs> the iron works that produce that. Charles Johnson and Son Fire Escape Company. There it is. Pretty cool. So you're looking at the authentic real deal here. The authentic real deal. Well, there it is, guys. Our next stop is going to be relatively close to here, which was the Biograph Theater. And once we go over to Biograph, we'll talk about John Dillinger, public enemy number one for the FBI and how he met his uh, face. So, this is what the stuff, this is the stuff that uh, Chicago was built on, huh? allegedly, that you guys like and Rosie likes. So Love it. Show, showcase it to you guys. So, yeah. are you going to continue to stream or end it and start another one? I'm going to end this and uh, go ahead and start navigate another, start another uh, one. Okay. navigate to our next location. So. All right, guys, so there it is, the scene of the infamous February 14th, 1929 St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Turn around, pass, place your hands against the wall, spread your feet, and meet your maker. There it is. Two Thompson submachine guns. They met business, huh, Marshall? 50 rounds and 20 rounds each. They fired away. Yeah, so. they, took okay. care of, they took care of their trolls and on that yeah. day. Well, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, too. They took care of business that day for sure. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching from 2122 North Clark Street. Thank you very much, everybody.